So I, I woke up with this idea. I don't really feel nervous about starting work today, but I have no idea how to understand what the kind of uh, current climate is around um, work and work relationships that may want to almost become something more than just professional. So some of the things that I kind of grew up with was uh, when you are in a work setting, sometimes depending on the culture, um, people end up being uh, some kind of family and working in the same setting. And people almost understand that there's a boundary. Like when we are at work, you know, we kind of present ourselves in a certain way, but people understand that, you know, if there's affection or, you know, just stopping by and saying hello is like normal. Um, but then if there's a work setting where there's sort of like some kind of interest that's brand new, in someone between like two different um, co-workers how do you approach that because my initial kind of um I don't even want to like I, I almost want to guess like what I would have thought in the past but I almost want to give myself a, like a new idea of like how to think about this because I think usually what happens is like you could be at work and then you notice like I like something about this person I don't know what it is yet so you kind of just talk and you kind of like you know Maybe if you guys kind of have the same work hours or you study the same or you're <laughs> working on the same thing or you come across each other in different ways, you start to get to know each other a little bit. And then you might want to kind of just like in, in conversation, just bring up like what your background is, like what kind of things you do in your free time and then see if they um, notice that maybe you're kind of trying to like hint at something like, hey, I'm kind of interested in you. Um and then just see like if they respond in any way that might indicate to you that I think I think I am too. So I don't like this is really new to me because I haven't really had a, t a time in my life where I got to kind of experiment with this and kind of wonder what what the normal is. So um, one of the things that I know is that sometimes like looking back in like different stories that I used to read is that some people would ask like a friend to be like, Hey, do you know if that person's seeing anybody or like, is there anybody important in their life where I shouldn't try to like wonder like with these questions so that I'm not kind of interrupting their heart in any way if they're already like in a relationship. And the reason I say that is because sometimes if somebody's in a relationship uh, and, it, and they're happy in it and, and they see that somebody else comes along and they're kind of interested in them, it might somehow undermine the integrity of that new relation of that existing relationship right so let's sit pretend i am a girl and i see um, a guy at work and i'm like hey i want to kind of get to know you but let's pretend he already has a boyfriend or he has a girlfriend and i don't know this yet so then i'm starting to talk to him and then he ends up wondering uh, like after he leaves he ends up wondering like oh i think that girl likes me and then he thinks maybe i'm going to like end my current relationship I don't know how I would feel about that. Like, it's not really just up to me. Like, it's kind of his life and he has to kind of decide with the person that he's with if, like, is our relationship really meeting our goal? Do we need to kind of move on? Or is it okay if, like, we explore other relationships and kind of keep our friendship? Because the way I think about it now is, and I've been thinking about this for a long time, in some places in the world, some people are okay, and actually since the Prophet's time and before that, um, like what we know with Solomon, some people are okay with having more than one partner in the relationship. Um, so like having like maybe one or two people that they really, really deeply love. And in the Quran, what I understand from that is that God says it's okay. Um, the only important thing to remember is that you have to treat them really um, equitably, which means that if you have that kind of idea in your mind, you should probably know that you need to be able to treat one the same way you treat another, which means it's going to be difficult if you all live in the same house right? Because already they're going to want to say, but you spend so much time with this person, you never spend this much time with me. So what we know of the prophet is that he actually had a special, um, almost like house for one wife. And then after she died, um, because it was really close to the place of worship that they used to have, after she died, I think he ended up marrying another woman. And then because sometimes with war and all the change that was happening uh, with trying to defend their identity and the way they used to think. Um, some women had husbands that died and the prophet almost felt bad. Like it's in a world where it's, we're still building civilization. We're still building how to protect ourselves and each other from 
people who don't really know what it is to protect other people's human rights. So he, he would feel kind of bad, like, I don't know how to protect this woman. And I want to make it make her feel like I'm not going to be there to hurt her. And other men shouldn't be feeling like we're allowed to just hurt whoever we want. So I think the best that thing he knew what to do was just to marry her and just be like if i'm married to this woman then that means other people can't just come and just think that they can um, almost disrespect her or her body in any way so what he did was he almost like built another room almost like another house for her beside like the mosque or the place that they would pray so then he'd have like a room and then a room and then he would just spend like okay today i'm gonna spend time with you and then the next day he would spend time with the other woman like his other wife and then he would try to love them both in the same way but he knows that you know sometimes just like your your friends sometimes you like one friend because you tell stories together Sometimes with the other friends, you like them because you're able to kind of just have quiet time. Maybe all you like to do is color or work on a craft together. So this is something that I'm trying to understand because friendships are something that do help us feel safe about the world and who we are and who we're going to be because we, we feel safe talking about certain subjects with them. And and maybe we feel like, you know, this is special for me because they, they don't judge me and they help me understand the universe. And I... I I've, I'm happy that I found this kind of person and I need that person in my life because I know that it can be hard to find these kinds of people who think like me. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of leave it at that and then come back to kind of like what's the present day kind of climate. So I know there's parts in the world where polygyny is a thing. Like I studied this in sociology in high school where uh, it's difficult to think of a woman having more than one like boyfriend or husband because sometimes people say, well, I mean, if she gets pregnant, how is she going to know like who the dad is like is it going to be something that comes up as a problem and that's something to think about like uh, I used to work with a woman who uh, she was older in life so I learned a lot from her about like relationships and communication and how important it is to be able to stand up for what you believe in so she used to tell me that she, after she was married she got divorced and the next person that she was kind of spending a lot of time with he used to sometimes make her feel like why don't we get married because he maybe felt like, I don't I don't want to lose you. I really want to make sure that you stay like kind of permanent in my life. But for some reason, she didn't feel comfortable with that. She was almost like, I don't I don't know if I really want that. Like, why is it important that we try to build trust and just understand that, you know, we can be enough for each other without getting married? And maybe it's because his family almost expected that of him. Like as I mentioned that sometimes friends have a hard time existing with each other like in an intimate way because outside of who they are as independent individuals their families almost keep pressuring them in some way and almost asking questions like why not and why and i get it it's curious because they're used to a way of thinking and a way of seeing things as normal but i think something we all have to remember is that it's important to let the, the actual couples in the relationship remember that they have to decide for themselves outside of whoever is outside of the relationship and kind of still important in their life but maybe a little bit too influential in trying to assume that they should have a say in how that relationship evolves because um as we said the heart has has reasons that we don't always understand and when we're still kind of new to this and we're trying to work really hard to understand and other people are almost making it feel like what you're feeling isn't normal and you should change the way you feel it gets really confusing and then we start to wonder like well maybe this isn't the right relationship for me which is really sad because how are you supposed to know? Like maybe it is a good relationship, but just because other people keep trying to interfere that you feel like no, and then you feel like nervous and scared and you're just like no, and then you give up and you didn't really give yourself a fair chance. So I'm going to just leave it at that because this is new. And I, like, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm almost trying to think of this without a lot of the ideas that we used to think about um, and with in the past. And then just kind of like, I'm just going to take it slow. I'm just going to think of an idea and then I'm going to kind of look around it like from other perspectives. Like what if I was a young boy? What if I was a young girl? What if, what if I am the parent of like two kids and I want to almost say like, maybe you think, and then stop myself and say, no, nope, it's not my, pro it's not my problem to work through as much as it is for them. Something to not think of as a problem and almost be like, this is kind of like a really neat adventure. Like, how do you want to understand something? And then they think about it together. And then if they have a question, they can ask me, but maybe when they even ask me, I don't really want to give an answer either. And I just want to be like, I don't know, like, what do you think? And just almost encourage them to think about it out loud with me. 
so like I mentioned um, in one of the other videos, it's almost like to be an advisor, which is knowing what questions to ask to help them think out loud about ways they feel comfortable thinking, right? So um, when I took that communications class uh, back in university, one of the things that we learned about therapy is that the therapist usually doesn't give answers. So sometimes if you go into a session and they say, so how do you feel today? Uh, what was it that you wanted to talk about? And then you can sit there and be like, well, I don't know how to talk about like something I'm maybe nervous about talking about because I don't know how the other person is going to judge me. So they won't say, oh, why don't you do this? They'll say, well, why do you feel like that? And then you might say, well, because I don't know, like there's this new idea that I have and I don't think I see anybody thinking the way I do. And then they'll say, well, why, why don't you try and then see what happens because you won't know until you try. And then they'll say, well, here are some tools, like this is what it means to be assertive. It means that you have to feel like you feel confident that this is an idea that's yours and it's a legitimate one, which means it's an okay feeling and it's an okay idea. And you want to kind of um, understand that it's new and you don't have to be apologizing that it's a new idea and that it's how you feel, right? So think about if I say, do you want to go to the mall with me versus, hey, I want to go to the mall. Do you want to come? Right. So the first one kind of sounds nervous. Like, are you going to hurt me? Or whereas the other one's like, if you want to say yes, OK, if you want to say no, that's OK, too. Like, I'm strong enough emotionally to be resilient and, and know that if if you change your mind and say, no, maybe not, even though maybe in the past you said, yeah, maybe in the future, then that's OK. I can make new friends and I can be OK on my own. That way you're already understanding that you don't have to make your emotions always attached to how others make you feel. So it's almost remembering that within yourself, you love yourself that much and you know that the universe loves you, that if people decide that sometimes I want to spend time with you and sometimes I don't, that's okay because I like spending time with myself all by myself and I love all the things that I'm learning to do that are hobbies and interests. So that's that's very good. We can learn to spend time together and sometimes spend time apart. And we can have other friends too. And I'm going to try to understand how to talk to you about maybe things that make me uncomfortable. And then you can tell me, you know, well, maybe this does make me comfortable. And then we'll have to understand like, okay, well, how do we want to be friends? So almost taking it slowly like that and, and remembering that anytime we have emotions, it's important to talk about them with the other person. So they're not guessing. Because sometimes when, when we're guessing about other people's emotions, we might get it wrong. And then the other person might be like, why, why did they think that about me? Like, they didn't even ask me. And then you don't know how to tell them. Like, and then you're kind of just stuck and then the relationship might fall apart and then you might not be friends. And it's like, all we had to do was just talk about it. So I'm going to leave that one there. Like this idea here, just kind of wait it out and see um, how things evolve from here.